Imagine being retired from your job, enjoying your life at your pace. Finally, having all the time to do the things you love doing with the person you love doing them with. Only to have your idyllic existence upended by the sudden death of your life partner. That life partner leaves you a gift. A cute little puppy that you can keep doing life with long after they're gone. Then some jerks come along, break into your house, beat you up, steal your car, and kill your little puppy. Your little reminder of the love of your life. For John Wick, this was enough to go on a murderous rampage, killing his way through three films seemingly to face those that are at the head of the mysterious high table. After being double-crossed in Chapter 3 Parabellum, we find out exactly how he'll respond in John Wick Chapter 4. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm leaving the theater. This is Ronald, and I am leaving the theater after seeing John Wick Chapter 4. John Wick Chapter 4, directed by Chad Stahelski, written by Shea Hatton and Michael Finch, starring Keanu Reeves, Donnie Yen, Bill Skosgaard, Lawrence Fishburne, Hiroyuki Sanada, Lance Reddick, and Ian McShane. And per usual, you can get a complete cast listing at the link in our show notes. I am not here alone. I am here with J.C. Howard. What up? Once again, J.C. Howard of Megan fame is back on. <laughs> is that's, that's what I want to be known for. Put that on my tombstone. I, I got J. C. you. Howard of Megan fame. I got you. I'm putting it on there. All right, we got you back. John Wick Chapter Four, of course, is the fourth installment of the John Wick series. For those of you uh, keeping track, Keanu Reeves uh, in the original movie went on a vengeful tear after his dog was killed that his wife gave to him. It had a lot of sentimental value, and Three movies later, he is still at odds with the high table or the people that are in control of the secret organization of assassins that he finds himself uh, running afoul of. J.C. Howard, what did you think of this film? Okay, so first, let me say, I did not, I was not into John Wick at all um, before this. Uh, so my homework to prepare for this movie was to watch all three of the previous ones. The first one, I did not care for very much. And so I was figured like, this is, we're not off to a great start. By the time I walked into the theater for number four, I was like, all right, I am ready to see Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne back together again. Like the, at the end of the third movie, for those who have seen it, at the end of the third movie, the two of them are like, we're, we're in it together. We're gonna like get vengeance for ourselves. That is not what this movie was. What this movie was, was still good. It was still something that I'm glad that I saw, but it was not exactly what I was expecting. Beautiful, but not Lawrence Fishburne and Keanu Reeves, The Matrix Reloaded, Reloaded, coming back for another, you know, another turn at the table, if you will. I think what you actually meant to say was The Matrix re-reloaded, mm. which is, uh, you know, you're absolutely right. I think one of the failures of the John Wick series generally is when they go from film to film, they have either killed so many people or there's so many people that are inexplicably absent from the previous film that it it almost feels like they're we're watching a reset movie. Now, granted, we have some characters that stay from movie to movie, but it seems like they they subtract so many and especially in this case when you like when you leave off with this cliffhanger that is this team up and you expect it in the next movie and really what we got was a series of Lawrence Fishburne cameos right. we got more of Lawrence Fishburne in in, in two and three yeah. than we did in this film and matter of fact maybe it was just three I don't even know if he was into I have to think about it I think he yeah I think he shows up in three so we got more of him in three than we did in chapter four as for the movie itself it is two hours and 49 minutes long and most people who 
listen to Leaving the Theater know that Ronald does not like a long <laughs> movie for no reason. Ronald and is it, not alone. Yeah. And this one dragged. I mean, like, when I say that, I mean, there's plenty of action. For those of you that like John Wick, you're going to get all your butt kicking and your shooty shooty and your stabby stabby. But at one point, I think towards the maybe the 48th, 49th percentile of minutes, whatever that is, over halfway through, I was like, all right, y'all got to wrap it up. Yeah. Like, we, we see where this is going. I'm still watching a bunch of action. We got to get to the point. What did you think of the length of this movie? Oh, you know, I saw you lean your head up against your hand right at that point. And I was like... Like I was, I, and I was with you. I was like, this is, this is enough. Like, this is too long. Like we've gotten, as you said, all the shooty, shooty, stabby, stabby. But what I will say about this is that it did slow down in comparison with the movies before, which in some ways I appreciated. I feel like you got a lot more, ironically, character development in this movie than you got in some of the others. Like one of the one of the problems that I, one of my critiques of a lot of Marvel movies is you get a lot of the character development in the standalone films. And then when they all get together, there's nothing. So like basically in those, like those Avenger movies basically are forequels like this one was, right? Like it's, they're, they're a long way down in the, in the series of movies and you don't get very much character development. Meanwhile, in John Wick 4, you slow down and you do start to like see some of the relationships form and develop in ways that you didn't get in the previous movies. As a matter of fact, in this one, you actually had John Wick not know a person. Yeah. That was amazing to me. I was like, okay, finally, four movies in, there's one person in this underworld of assassins that he hasn't run into. And like taking the time to even establish what connection those two characters had, the things that they had in common. I will say I was rooting for that other character sometimes, and I was conflicted about it, right? Because I'm supposed to be rooting for the hero. I'm supposed to be rooting for John Wick, and I'm rooting for this, so to speak, this nobody who's just showed up onto the screen, and I liked that. It was well over the amount of time I would have wanted to spend in that theater but for what I got I was I was happy with what I got I just wish that I could have gotten it in an hour less time yeah I will say that for everyone who likes John Wick you'll like this movie uh this there's they don't deviate from the stuff that we love from the stuff that we really enjoy about these films they don't deviate from any of that there's lots of gunplay lots of mysterious talkings back and forth very light on the plot as a matter of fact when they lean too heavily into the plot i'm like don't don't do it don't explain too much like the more y'all explain the less sense that this uh this whole series begins to make so I, and i think you're right i think introducing this new character uh i found myself in the same way kind of rooting for him at times, and wanting to see more of him, saying like, hey, if they want to take the movie into the direction of we getting to see more of this guy, then I'd be up down for that. I will say the similarities between a black person and the relationship with dogs from chapter three and into chapter four, I thought those similarities were a little bit too similar to ignore. At one point, I expected to see some sort of connection between those two characters because of the ways in which that they fought and commanded their dogs. And the same, the same kind of dogs, too. The exact same kind same, of dog. Same breed of dog. Yeah. yeah. So it made me wonder if there was something that I was missing or if there's something they're doing a wink wink to the audience. But it doesn't seem that way. And and that's one thing about these movies. You know, uh, I, I recently realized that it's a stunt man who directed it, a former stunt man. He's a director now. He's done four movies. And the uh four movies he's done are John Wick's. And the one thing he's known for before doing these movies is being Keanu Reeves' stunt double in The Matrix. So he knows action very well, and he does action very well in these movies. But but for me, the mythos of these movies, the parts in which they want us to lean in, played better in parts one and two than they did in parts three and four. And three and four was almost too much of it. Whereas in one and two, it's just like, ooh, there's a mysterious place of assassins. This is amazing. Like the idea of John working and people coming out of the woodworks, like the cop coming out and saying, hey, you working again, John? Or John seeing his uh, his uh, people in the hotel who are nearby who's like, hey, John, you working? Like asking stuff like that. It felt more mysterious and more like tongue in cheek and fun. But now that the cat is 
is seemingly out of the bag, it just feels like they're not, they're, they're almost adding too much plot for me to like really sit back and just say, I just want to see the action. It's cool. But if you're going to add all these extra, extra elements, I'm going to have questions. And if you can't answer those questions, what it seems like they're not going to, then it's just like, uh, I mean, okay, I don't know how many more of these you could do, but whatever. I guess I'll keep showing up for them. Yeah. No, that's right. I think the mystique around the table and what all that stuff meant uh, is one of the things that made me kind of want to come back for two is like, I don't understand what these are. And in three and four, you're right. They, they, they started to ask questions that they didn't exactly provide answers to, which to some degree is okay. If you're going to like, you know, do a slow release of information, but they're not, there's no drip drip or anything. There's just no information given. But one of the things that I appreciated about three and four, but particularly four is the the themes that they're going with they're, they're, it, it seems to me at least the the fourth movie here the theme was kind of about aristocracy it was about the like the people who are running the table and them kind of versus the people who are the the worker bees the assassins who are under the table as they kind of say in the movie um and i thought that that was a really interesting thing to like actually toy with those power dynamics and say you know actually the people in charge what happens when they're not in charge? What happens when, you know, you got someone getting something over on them? And you you started that in the third movie and you kind of continued it in, in this one. And I do feel like there will be, if there's another John Wick movie, you're going to kind of see more exploration of that, of like breaking the system, breaking the wheel, instead of like just working within the system as they have been. Okay, so with all of that being said, how do you rate this movie? I will say this. Uh oh. I would, so four stars, if I'm understanding this correctly, four stars is I would see it again, right? Three stars is I would see so it again. Three stars is I would see it again. Okay, in that case, I will give it 2.9 stars. <laughs> and the reason for that is I would see it again in a movie theater, but I probably won't see it again in a movie theater. So, because the, the thing is, this movie, it was beautiful. Like, it was, I watched the first three on my computer or on my television at home, and it was fine. It was, it was wonderful. But this movie, seeing it on a big screen, it made it worth it. This is the first movie I've seen since probably 2020 that made me feel like, yeah, it was worth coming out to a theater to actually see this. Yeah, I think uh, I, get, I give it three. I give it three. So I think 2.99 is fair. Yeah. I give it three. I... I was ready for it to be over when it was done. I would watch it again if it was on television. Um, uh, but I actually prefer the second one. If I had to rank all four of these movies, I would say two, one, uh, three, four in that order for me. Uh, two is my favorite. There are some very cool scenes in the catacombs that I really enjoyed. And the common, uh, the, the duel he has with common is very, very enjoyable. I didn't really feel like there were any moments like this in this movie. I would disagree with you there. I think that the, there was this scene. The overhead shot? The overhead yeah, shot. Yeah, you know the what? I, I take that back. You're absolutely right. It was, again, beautiful. Just yeah. the way that they shot it, room to room, and the weapon that they gave John, again, no spoilers, but the weapon that they gave John as they're tracking through this aerial kind of space, just amazing to watch. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, that, I would watch it for that, yeah. uh, for that reason. And I think there was a, the stairs, uh, the stairs scene was also very good. I'd watch that again as well. But other than that, I was ready for it to be over. But watching it at the house, I think would be more enjoyable because I could pause it, stop it, turn it off anytime that I wanted, which I think is a little bit better. I think if every scene were about 10 minutes shorter, I'd, I would definitely watch it again. But at the length that it is now, one and done. One and done. And I'm fairly certain the third movie was about two hours and 25 minutes. So I think they, they could probably find 20 minutes to cut off of this movie. I would say that. Uh, with that, Leaving the Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Rod Studios. Thomas Tyra of Bias Studios mixes the show. Thank you, Tom. Show art from Heather Wilder. Deep music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. 
For more information about John Wick Chapter 4 or J.C. Howard, check out our show notes. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Oh It's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. You can find out more about this show and other Oh It's Big Ron Studio shows by following us on Instagram at Oh It's Big Ron Studios and on Twitter at Oh It's Big Ron Stu. That's S-T-E-W. Leave it at Theater. We'll be back soon. Thanks for listening. And thanks for being on the show, JC. Thanks for having me. It was a, a shooting good time. Ha! <laughs>